So as you guys know, as we've been covering extensively, of course, the Supreme Court in a landmark ruling overturning Roe versus Wade. Now, not only have Democrats had literally 50 years to prepare for this moment, mm -hmm. but even within this administration, they got a head start because this decision was leaked. We all knew it was coming. And so you would think that they might have been prepared for it, but they weren't. Uh, Puck News actually has this report that their response has been so <laughs> lacking and embarrassing that even Republicans are shocked at how little they have actually done. Put this up on the screen. Uh, this is Puck News. They say the GOP inside conversation on Roe during the past few days have been talking to Republican operatives across DC. They were all careful not to gloat, but they've also been shocked at how little the Democratic Party is doing to fight back. Here is how this uh, begins. This is from Julia Yaffe. She says, you would think that with a month of advance warning about how SCOTUS was going to rule, Democrats would have been better prepared for the day that Roe versus Wade finally fell. And yet when it happened, Democrats did what Democrats do best, make memes, get mad at each other and do little of consequence. Yeah. Don't forget, Pelosi did read a poem uh, and send out an, a fundraising email. So they did do that. Yeah, so this is what a GOP aide uh, said to them. Quote, if I were the libs, I would be putting forward a flurry of legislation like making birth control free and widely available. If you say it's not widely enabled enough, go after that. Cover the gaps. Don't go for the big stuff. Split the GOP conference as much as you can. Yeah. Force people to vote. If the goal is protecting women or advancing legislation, you could actually pass. Take every possible <clears throat> potential that you possibly could. You know, another interesting one is actually uh, what Matt Iglesias and some others have been pointing out, which is that Planned Parenthood and the other choice groups are refusing to allow votes on exceptions because they don't want to decouple exceptions from Roe and they don't have the votes, frankly, for Roe right now. But, I mean, that seems like a decent strategy. Yeah. If you know, Like, why not? If you have 60 votes for exceptions in the life of the mother, like, shouldn't you pass that? Like, and but, rape and incest. Right, and, well, that's my yeah. Exceptions or, and rape. And it's like, well, another hey, one, you should probably pass that unless you want the talking point, right. though. Well, and oh, you have, yeah. you actually, you have a majority of Americans who also fear that, um, who expect that this decision on Roe will lead to the overturning of Obergefell is mm -hmm. the latest point. And there's 56% of Americans yeah, that, they, that they think yeah. that's coming next. I mean, Justice Thomas mentioned it specifically. Yeah, go pass codify gay marriage. I mean, even if you think it's an outside chance, like get that shit in writing and make sure it's done while you have the chance. Uh, another one is now there's questions about whether states like Texas are exploring banning women from interstate travel to be able to get abortions in states where it is still legal. Codify, make sure that that mm -hmm. is clearly illegal as well because the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh kind of indicated maybe this would be a problem, but they did not say it clearly and states are moving forward with this. So the idea there's nothing you can do is just not true. And there are many avenues they could pursue that, as you say, would really put Republicans in a tough spot yeah. who are out on a limb on this and in a crazy, you know, extreme positions and really beholden to a very radical fringe on this issue that's very well organized, but nothing. And, and again, they had time to get this all figured out. You really would think if this was a functioning political party at all, the minute this came down, we would have a list of legislation, talking points ready, ready to go, ready to put the pressure on, and yet nothing. Yeah. Um, there's a, let's put this one up on the screen next. Uh, more to this point, they say Democrats could have codified Roe in 93 with Bill Clinton and congressional majority. They could have done it again in 2009. They had a super majority and Barack Obama had promised it would be the first thing he'd do in office, but they didn't. Why? This is from an article that is in the conservative National Review. Uh -huh. So again, it's not just, you know, people like me and AOC who are like, where the hell are you guys? It's liberals. It's Perry Bacon Jr. in the Washington Post. Um, it's lots of liberals on Twitter who are like, what's going on? And it's Republicans. Republicans who are quietly like, I can't believe they're not doing yeah. anything. Well, they're just, it's, they look, they're bad at their jobs. They are there's so no bad other, at their there's jobs. There's no other really way to put it. Indeed. All right, guys, thanks for watching. More for you later. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.